So I'm here in my garden at home. Uh, this weekend, we're not going anywhere. We did go somewhere yesterday, but not today, because we've got other things to do today. Mainly, this. This is a six inch Garrett 4SD, and she's now mine. So she's six years old. Um, not been used extensively by the last owner. Um, and we went over yesterday. I'll, um, I'll cover more of what we did yesterday and, and uh, picking it up and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, exciting news. Uh, I've got it back and just gonna sort it out now and, uh, and put a fire in her and get her going for today. <laughs> you see me all straight up where you fell over yesterday. <laughs> so what have we got Tom? Well, you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice six inch Garrett 4 CD. So lovely engine, built about 2016 from papers wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so we went and had a look at this morning. We sort of had a look at the paperwork, we saw the boiler reports and things. Um, checked for all those, they've been done by an independent inspector, which is what we like to see. Um, we know the inspector as well, um, so we can trust the paperwork. Uh, and then yeah, we sort of had a quick look over, chucked a fire in her and here we are. So, this morning. She's getting up to, uh, getting up to 50. Yeah. So she'll, uh, she'll turn over soon, won't she? Certainly will. She's a bit full of water, so we might just let it burn a little bit off. So yeah. we open up the... Yeah. Because it really has been sort of shot up. Yeah. So we ended up moving her uh, over here, uh, still warm, so it's got too much water in just to make sure it didn't dry out, so that's all just releasing now before we run it.
and pivot them around to get them in the right place you just literally pull them backwards same on the full size engines okay so we'll shut that off again um do that so the water goes all the way to the top because the steam i have not steam the water should come back down and balance <laughs> that's because she's had a good shake up so but yeah so if you have a gauge glass pop just pull those together forward you can see there's no steam coming out there. They're Barker gauges, so they're really, really good. And they actually do shut off properly. There you go. And that's what the boiler inspector will probably do, that procedure as well. Mm. So they'll want, they'll want to see the fact. So what they see by doing this, they see it shuts off, yeah? yeah. So they know that both those passageways are clear. Because if that is just like a little dribble coming out of there, you think that passageway was blocked. And then what they'll do is shut that off. Water goes all the way to the top. 
and then Steam will come back down and balance it out again. Mm. And that's just the, the sort of blow down procedure. But yeah. And if you do have one pop as well, go for the... The steam looks a lot worse, but go for the water first, so go for the bottom one first, then shut the steam off on the top. Because the steam one's forcing downwards and it's steam, it turns to vapour almost instantly. The water is like a jet of boiling hot water. That's what I was saying about your shorts, if one of those pops. Yep. Yep. So, I'm just going to have a run through of yeah. what we've got here. Yep. So, ultimately, that is winding on handbrake, it's counterclockwise, off is clockwise. Then we've got the pump, which we uh, engage via that lever there. Yep. And then uh, with that to open it up, and that will then start putting water in. Yep. Um, and actually, I mean, it was sort of right away, almost there. It was about there, wasn't it? When we yeah. So you can really shut get it all it the way. Yeah. So you can shut oh. it all the way if you wanted to, but the um, thing to do is listen to it. Yeah. And bring it in gently. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just whack it in. Yeah. Um, there we've got the drain valve. Drain cocks for drain your high pressure. Drain cocks for the high pressure and. We've got the drain cots for the low pressure cylinder there. And that's the injector. Uh, blower. Blower. Yeah. Blower. Because that's the injector. Yep. With the injector, we go water on first. Yep. Then. Let it um, run three, four seconds. Yep. Um, then we can bring in, uh, bring the steam in. Yep. And if it's still blowing, just knock that back a bit yeah. till it catches. Yeah. So, so if you, so when you first open up the steam, it might sort of blow a load of steam out of it and you'll see a big cloud come out. It, within a second, it should pick up. If it doesn't do that, shut your steam off, open it back up again. And what you'll find, because it, it seems to like, it seems to like being opened once and then closed and starting again. So you may find you have to do that quite a bit with this. Quite a few injectors do it. Open it up. If it's really dribbling, load of water out the bottom of it, then throttle it back on the water valve. Water, nice yeah. and gently, just bring it back. And what you'll find as well, when it's got high pressure, you'll probably find you can just leave that water valve open. Yep. As the pressure drops in the boiler, you'll have to just shut that valve off to give it like a back pressure on the on the suction side of it, which will make it run clean. Yep. So yeah, you might find you know you'll get to the point where you know well 150 percent I need to put that at three o'clock, you know, at two o'clock rather than reversing lever. I'm happy with gears. I'm happy with. Um. These are just for adjustment, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got all of our. What are we? What? Are, just reservoirs, aren't they? Yeah, oil points, Yeah. Yeah, yeah just for reservoirs. Um, and then we've got all of these points there as well. We've got the four there and the two little ones yep. in the middle there. Um, and we've got the wheels, fronts. We do more of. Yep. They're only turning when we lift them. Yep. yep. Um, so that's where the water's going in by yep. the pump. That's the pump. So yep. on here as well, if you look, you've got a valve on here. So yep. if you turn that 90 degrees, so the, that line's facing yep. upwards, that should isolate that clack valve. Yep. So if something gets in that bore or you have a leaking pass or something like that, you should be able to just turn that and it will shut that clack valve off and isolate yep. it. Yep. Same with the injector side. Yep. Um, and so when we're lining up tomorrow morning, we should have the right amount of water in anyway. Should do. Um, other than that, we can uh, take off that, take the connector off this, uh, yep. the the uh, the injector clack valve. Yep, that's what I do. Um, and put a hose onto that and just put some water straight yep. in the boiler from there. Yep. I say you can, you can put it into if, there. If if. But, but so, if, I mean, if, if you were like at a rally field and you get there and you think, right, I've got no hose and I've got enough water on the boiler, yep. what do we do? Uh, well, you've got that fit in there, so if you can get it an oil can, you can pour it into that one like yep. what Nigel did this morning. Yeah. Um, much short of that, not much. <laughs> like sometimes people... So, so don't, just don't do it, yep. basically. Yeah. 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 Or um, little caravan electric water pump. Some people have those for filling boilers up. Right. You know, just so you've got a little electric pump so you can use your aqua roll. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that 
considering we we uh, we filled that up earlier. Yeah, you could probably throttle that back a bit. That is chucking a load in. So I mean that's fixed, but um, I think I'll show you one in there. But what's happening in there is you've got a plunger. So you've got a, a cylinder and then like a ram that goes down it. And it, what this does, as it goes round, it just pulls the ram back. Mm. There's four holes around this cylinder. The oil goes into it and then it fires forward and pushes it in. Um, what we you probably find is if you wind this out, out or in, it's probably wound all the way in actually, looking like that. Oh no, no, from this side, sorry. If you wind that in, what will happen is in effect your so we're that way around, aren't we? So that's your cylinder, that's your ram. What happens is that pulls back, all the oil goes in into, into this cylinder here through yep. the holes, and it's firing forward. If you wind that forward, it means as the ram comes back, it's, there's a smaller, it's a, space, a smaller for, space for the, for the, for the yeah. oil to go into. That's it. And the best thing to do to do with that is just whip that, just drain it all out, have a look down it, all right? Loosen off that, and that's a lock. Just loosen, get rid of that. Yep. Just be careful there's a little non-return spring there, so don't lose that. Undo that lock nut, and then say, just wind it inwards, um, and then just check it, mm. and see how it goes. But yeah, you can, I mean, it's a case of, you know, you, you can have too much oil, um, you know, like that really should be topped up every, twice a day. Yep. Something like that, you know. So. Open, close. Yep. I personally right. leave mine open when I put it in, when I put it away. Right. Just so there's any condensation in the yeah. doors to come out. Yeah. Okay. So we can do that one. Yeah. And it also reminds you as well when you come to ticker over when you first use her again, they'll already be open. Yeah. So when you ticker over any water that does, there will be condensation in there still. It'll just allow that to clear. when you open those drains, you don't want them open for a long time, 20, 30 seconds, just allow the water to clear out. You know earlier when we did it at Nigel's, right. we had those massive jets of water coming out. As soon as they cleared, I shut the drains. Right. There's no reason to do any more than that. Right. It's easy then. 